Hey everyone, my name is Adam Archer, and today we're going to be taking a look at the knives that I've purchased this summer. I haven't really been making videos since Blade Show, um, or the video that I showed why I purchased Blade Show, but I have been going to flea markets, yard sales, just went to a knife show, um, and then I did go to the 127 yard sale, or the chain of yard sales. So I thought I'd show everything that I had purchased. Um, I'm not going to go into any particular order, um, but let's put um, what I purchased at the most recent knife show at last, um, because that, those are some of my favorites. So, first off is a Smith & Wesson California issue. It's a neat little California legal automatic made by Smith & Wesson. Um, I believe this is pre-Taylor Cutlery, and it does have a piece of bone in the handle. It's basically a copy of the uh, Protec Runt. So, uh, it's, it's a cool knife, has a very strong spring on there. And I purchased that from a local knife shop. The same time I purchased this knife because it was unique, didn't get a good deal on it like I do, or I try to on most of my knives. Um, but it is a Purple Bone Coleman knife. So you can see the Coleman logo on there. And then it actually has a um, tang stamp of a Coleman lantern. Let's see if you guys can see that. So yeah, it has the Coleman lantern right there. On the reverse side, you have AUS-6, and it's made in Seki City, Japan. Then on the blade right there, it says Japan. Not sure if you guys can see that. Yeah. So Japan, and then Seki on the tang. Pretty cool for a trapper. It is purple. When I saw it actually in the display, I thought it looked blue. It was just how the sun was sitting on it. I think I was seeing this side also, but it ended up being purple. I still bought it. It was like 26 bucks. They had maybe five or six additional Coleman um, knives, uh, different models in purple as well at the same time. Um, so let's talk about some knives that I purchased at a local flea market. Uh, first off was a Benchmade Griptilian. Um, it is in not that great of condition. You can see the blade um, has been sharpened considerably, um, but I did get it at a good price where I could just swap or request Benchmade swap out the blade, and it would still be under the price that most used Griptilians would sell for. So I thought I would add that to my collection, especially since I don't own a Griptilian except for a mini Griptilian. So added that to my collection. Uh, probably the best deal that I've gotten at my local flea market was this Benchmade Auto Reflex. Um, came with a broken spring, so I did have to go onto eBay and buy extra springs, which now I have two extra springs since they come in a set of three, and it now functions very well. This is one of the old ones with ATS-34 black blade, partially serrated, pretty cool knife. It has been used and sharpened. You can see the tip does not go down to where it normally would, um, but you can't complain when you're buying a knife for $5. <laughs> yep, I got ended up getting this for only $5 from a vendor at my local flea market. Another knife that I picked up was a Tops. I believe this is called the Steel Eagle. Yep, Steel Eagle 105. Pretty cool knife. Not something I'd normally buy, um, but I thought was neat. Um, so, my, or Micarta handles, um, they almost always use 1095 blade steel. It is pretty dull, the back, um, like, saw blade. So, I'll, I'll probably sharpen that up. Um, and it did come with some scars on the um, the finish of here, or some scratches. I like to call them scars since they are a little bit deeper. But cool little knife, um, decently comfortable in the hand, and came with a nice Kydex sheath. Pretty cool. Did I get anything else at my local flea market? Nope, I believe that was all. Let's go to the knives that I purchased at the 127 yard sale this year. Um, the first, so I went for, I believe, 
three days, um, Thursday, Friday. I actually skipped Saturday. Uh, no, I, I went Saturday as well. That's when I purchased some good stuff. So first off, I bought these both from the same dealer. This is a case knife, but what was unique about this is that it you use a thumb stud and it has a liner lock as well. So pretty neat there. Something that at first I thought was fake, so I looked it up on my phone, found out that it is actually a case knife. Um, it reminds me a lot of what um, Bayer MGC produced, so it may actually be a knife produced by them with, of course, um, the case name attached to it. I believe Case would subcontract some of their knives to be produced by their companies. Um, the model number is 7110LSS. Pretty cool knife, um, and there you go. Uh, the other knife I got from that same vendor is a Boker Slim Trapper with um, VG10 steel. Pretty cool knife. It is missing the pocket clip or it broke off from the original owner. Actually, the person I bought it from, I think he said he owned a pawn shop, so he wasn't even the original owner, but it broke off at some point. Um, got that for a fantastic value. Problem is, I thought Boker sent you pocket clips for free. I think it costs like 15 bucks from them or something. I don't know. I may just grind this off so it looks like it's more, um, or it can't like scratch somebody. I don't think I'll spend the time to put a pocket clip on there or request a pocket clip. Pretty cool knife anyways. Functions pretty well. And there you go. Um, next thing that I got was this was actually on the dollar table of somebody. So everything they were selling at that table was simply a dollar. Um, they were some German throwing knives. Normally it comes in a set of three, but one of the knives was missing. I believe it's the green handle one. So this one has a red handle. This one used to have a blue handle, but most of the paint chipped off. Um, and then it came with the sheath as well. This is made by Vols Cutlery Company, or uh, Vol yeah, Vols Cutlery Company, Germany. And I'll zoom in and let you sh or see the name on there. Seems like they are very well made. Um, so I was happy to get those for only a dollar. Um, can't decide what I want to do with this one, whether I want to kind of clean the rust off of it, um, if I want to repaint it. Or do I want to just keep it how it is to retain its original appearance? I haven't decided. I was actually considering um, dipping it in Plasti Dip. Um, I thought that would be kind of a way to make it so that um, it would be a little bit grippier. Um, at the same time, I do kind of want to keep it original. I don't know. I'll, I'll consider uh, or think it over. Lastly, well, actually this wasn't the last thing I got at the 127 sale. Um, I purchased a Spyderco Spider Wrench from a, actually a knife dealer that was, um, had a table up while going to those yard sales. A pretty cool and unique Spyderco knife. This is the fully serrated version. So these came in parsley serrated, fully serrated, or plain edge. Um, but the downside is this was probably the worst serration or the worst condition serrations that I'd seen. Um, they were very chipped and just it was abused. So you may be able to see it there and then on this other side you may be able to see it a little bit better. But pretty bad condition serrations. You can send um, even serrated knives to Spyrco to resharpen. So that's what I'll end up doing. Um, and they do a fantastic job at fixing um, badly sharpened serrations, as I have sent knives to them in the past. One video that I'm thinking about making is showing or comparing the Spyrco Spider Wrench with the Bird Wrench, as that is just the Bird version of the Spider Wrench. Uh, has the same tools on it. Um, looks like for a lot of it they may have used the exact same design um, shapes and all that so that'll be kind of cool to compare 
the Spiderco uh, spider wrench was made in the USA and the bird wrench was made in China. Uh, one of the last things that I purchased on the 127 sale is something that I was super, super happy about because I don't think I had actually bought a single thing until I found this and that was on the, I believe the first day of this show or of the, uh, that I was going to them. Um, and those were a, I think nine bench, or not bench made, uh, NATO military automatics. Um, a person was selling them, they were all broken, um, but there's enough parts to assemble four of them completely. Um, so I thought that was very cool. Yeah, you can see that this one doesn't even fire. Um, so I'll just find the parts that work the best. Um, and I think it's kind of cool to have some just disassembled in my display case as well, because you can see the insides. And I do have a bunch of them, um, buying them over the years of assembled ones that are in good condition. So having some broken ones is pretty cool as well, even if just for parts. I bought all of those for like 20 bucks, so awesome to have all of those parts. Although, it made me wonder, who owns nine of these that are broken? How many of them do they have that are functioning? Um, sadly, the guy was selling them for his son, so I wasn't able to really ask any questions. Um, but, pretty awesome in itself. Um, this is kind of something I just bought off of eBay. Um, but I thought this was cool. At Blade Show 2019, I had saw these at the Condor booth. Um, these are some spearheads that are made for fishing. So designed by Joe Flowers. Um, I thought these would be fantastic to add to my survival kit. Um, and I just thought they were awesome. Uh, extremely sharp, actually sharp enough to cut paper. I believe they're made out of probably 10, is it 1045 or 1065 or something that Condor normally uses. Um, and you do get a set of three of them. At first I was thinking I would need to, uh, like because I didn't really handle the sheath too much or the case that they come in too much while I was at Blade Show. But after feeling it, I'm, I just threw it in with the case because it is reinforced very well. I don't think they're going to pop out at all. Um, I'll just throw it in with the case into my survival kit. And they are very cool. Really like them. Glad I purchased. So there you go. The rest of these knives I purchased at a knife show I just got back from yesterday. So I took a day off work, went to a knife show, um, and got all of these. Uh, these knives I purchased all from one vendor, got these from another vendor, and this one from another. So let's talk about the Smith & Wesson knife first. Um, this was rather interesting. So Smith & Wesson first response knife. Comes with a kind of nice sheath. And I thought this was interesting because it's like, it has a plain like rescue style blades, so large serrations, kind of a pry bar style tip, so non-sharpened, but it does use a liner lock, so I wouldn't really trust that type of pry bar. Um, but what I thought was interesting is this kind of auto type glass breaker. So when you pull up this lever, it launches this spring uh, propelled spike to break windows, so. Pretty awesome there. I just thought that design was awesome. So picked that up from the knife show. And I like the sheath. Um, I don't think this is a uh, Smith & Wesson knife that's still being produced. Um, so, well, designed by Blackie Collins. Hmm. I think Smith & Wesson repurchased they either purchased Taylor Cutlery or they purchased their name back from Taylor Cutlery. I don't recall. Um, but something happened a few years ago. Um, next is from a vendor that I had purchased a huge set of automatic knives from last year. Um, he had, I think it was, oh, let's see how many of these. 
So we'll push those up. He had, let's see, three, six, nine, ten, eleven of these older, uh, they call them the classical spring knives, model number AR102. Um, they're basically 20 plus year old, or he said they were 20 years old. I think they probably are. Um, they're just little automatic out the front knives. Um, I was probably going to buy all of them. He, the original price he said was $5 if I was wanting one. I asked him what he'd take for all 11 of them. He said 20 bucks. So got a fantastic deal on those. Um, I actually had already had one in my display case. So I thought it would be awesome just to have a whole stack of them kind of in the back of it that you can look at. Um, I don't know. I like to have a lot of automatic knives in my display cases. And I thought adding these would be a nice touch. Um, I, don't, I don't sell my automatic knives, so um, I buy all those to either, most of them for display purposes. Okay, so lastly, knives I bought from one person. Um, first off is a Benchmade Striker, uh, or Auto Striker. Pretty cool knife. It had been owned by somebody in the military previously, so they had painted the handle tan, which I thought looked awesome because some of like the silver from the aluminum was coming through, some of the original black handle was showing through, so that just looked cool. Um, serrations are in fantastic condition, still super sharp. They had used kind of the tip a little bit, as well as they had started sharpening this more into a swooping almost a spear point shape rather than the pointy tanto, which I prefer more of a spear point rather than tanto anyways, so I, was, I didn't mind that. Um, I just thought it looked cool. Um, I did pay, I don't know, uh, I, I didn't get probably a fantastic deal on that, but I did get a fantastic deal on some of the other knives, and I've been wanting a striker, so I bought it anyways. Um, it did not come with a box. Next is a auto spike. Very quick blade on there. Um, older bench made, it has the butterfly with the balisong or balisong in it instead of the normal bench made logo or the newer bench made logo. Pretty cool there. Um, does not have the blade seal listed. And the interesting thing about this one, it does not have a pocket clip. So, pretty neat. Next is a knife that I had sold maybe five to six years ago and regretted it ever since. This is the Benchmade Rescue Striker. So it is basically the Benchmade uh, Striker except with a rescue style blade, so fully serrated and is not a sharpened tip. So those are basically made so you could get like under clothing or under a safety belt and you wouldn't risk cutting somebody. So. Pretty cool. I had really liked my other one, and um, I'm glad that I was I got an opportunity to repurchase it. I really want to get a um, auto rescue striker, so it would basically be one of the uh, auto strikers except with the rescue blade. Um, I've had the chance. Well, people have beat me to purchasing it two or three times in the past year. Um, I don't want to pay like the $200 that I sometimes see them, or $250 that I sometimes see them, but um, the more reasonable $120 that I've uh, been beaten on purchasing um, I, is more realistic. Um, next is a three Kershaw automatics. Um, these two uh, Kershaw breakouts, or that is the model number, right? No, Rogue. Um, the Kershaw Rogue, I actually already owned a black bladed Kershaw Rogue, um, but since they are discontinued, I thought, hey, um, I'll pick these up. I did want the serrated version, or the satin version, as it is nice to have multiple variations of the same knife, especially when they are discontinued and getting more difficult to purchase. It did have some surface rust, but isn't too big of an issue. So, got that one. 
It does have the box and a majority of its paperwork. The black bladed version is in a little bit better condition. Of course, no rust since it does have that black coating on the blade. One of the things that I thought was interesting versus the one that I had owned previously is that the writing on the blade is a little bit different, as you can see there. Um, so this is the new one. This is the one that I had owned. Um, the new one actually does not show the blade steel on it. So thought that was interesting, as well as the writing is a little bit it's kind of broken into two parts on this one versus all in one part. Uh, everything else on the knife seemed to be identical. Um, yeah, so I'm guessing they were just produced at different times. Uh, make sure I don't mix those up. And lastly, of all these knives after a 20 minute video is the Kershaw Breakout. Uh, extremely fast. I, I had been searching for one of these as I never had owned a Kershaw Breakout. Um, I had, I've had opportunities to buy them, but just not in very good condition um, when I've seen them. So, listen to how fast this one is. Just super quick, very springy, and it is a discontinued Kershaw knife, so I'll definitely be displaying this one. Is parsley serrated, no signs of use or rust, so very happy about that. And it does have the paperwork still in the box, so pretty cool there. Um, there we go. That is all the stuff that I've bought, or all the knives that I've bought this summer uh, since Blade Show. Actually, Blade Show wasn't in the summer, was it? Or was that officially summer yet? I don't remember. Um, but these are the knives that I've purchased. I have been got some great deals this summer pretty happy I especially have about the blade or the knife show that I just got back from as I purchased a majority of this just at that one show anyways thank you for watching I wonder if you did watch this entire 22 minutes um, anyways thank you have a great day uh, if you're wanting to see videos on any of these let me know I'm gonna be filming a decent amount today so if I don't already have the video filmed, I will film it or try to film it this week. Whew. I've lost my voice. This is the second take of this video that I've done. So there you go. Bye.